What's up design family and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you back on the channel. Before we get started, if you guys are not subscribed, please consider doing so. We put out great content on a week to week basis and it would mean the absolute world to us if you were to join us along for the ride. On today's episode, we have episode two of our design to production series. This is a series that you guys have enjoyed in the past where we've taken a particularly complex and challenging sportswear design project and showed you how our team approached the design brief, took it through its development stages, and ultimately created a physical product at the end. Whether you're an aspiring sportswear designer or a veteran of the industry, I think you'll learn a thing or two today, and maybe you'll teach us a thing or two in terms of how we could have done the process better. The product we'll be looking at today is going to be this Daredevil inspired seamless knit compression top. Hey guys, and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around, you're in for a good one. The first step of any design project is understanding the client's needs, understanding the product brief. Here we had a client that was essentially looking to create superhero inspired sportswear. Mixing those two aesthetics actually works extremely well because of the angular lines, the color blocking, so it just made total sense to do this. They also wanted to create a product that was functional. So we ended up going down the compression route because compression gear actually does a lot to enhance a user's performance, especially in high intensity scenarios. So it just made sense to merge those two things together. Also, they wanted to implement some innovative production techniques. We ended up going down the seamless knitting route just because it allowed us to create the aesthetic that we wanted while also bringing in areas of ventilation, bringing areas of color blocking to help shape the physique and all of that put together just allowed us to approach this project with an innovative kind of look and feel while still catering towards the customer's core demographic and their USP. Now that we've established what the product is going to be, what the key inspiration sources are going to be like, the idea was to begin designing. We start every single design project by creating a simple mood board. Typically this is in conjunction with a questionnaire provided by the client. And then we use Procreate to sketch the silhouette. The silhouette here was going to be quite simple. Since we're going to employ seamless knit technology, we knew that we weren't going to have many cuts in the pattern itself. Typically, the only cuts that you need in a seamless garment are going to be at the shoulder if necessary and at the sleeves. Here, we went for a set in sleeve construction pattern. So we only needed a seam line along the shoulder and on the armhole itself. The rest was open play. We started by thinking about Daredevil and the suit that characterizes Daredevil. What are the colors that create that Daredevil set? Obviously, they're going to be red and black. Perfect since with seamless knit technology, you're typically limited to around two to three yarns. Obviously with more advanced machinery, you could go more and you can begin to cut and sew pieces, but we wanted to keep the identity as simple as possible. So red and black, we used Pantone to identify those two, the red and the black, so that we can get as close as possible to the look and feel. Then it was about creating the silhouette. Obviously, this was going to be a compression garment. So the silhouette was going to be quite tight and then starting to figure out how can we distribute these different knits to create that daredevil aesthetic whilst still maintaining the functionality of the garment. So in terms of the knits that we chose, they not only needed to be aggressive to help color block, but also to be functional where necessary. In areas under the pits, we ended up going with a little bit of a looser knit structure to open up the pores of the garment and to let the garment breathe. Now that we have figured out the product type, what it was going to look like, it was time to turn this concept into a digital reality. The first step of that process is to take that sketch and to turn it into a 3D model. We use Clo 3D in order to create all of our digital models and what that allows us to do really, really well is to create a digital prototype to show our customers, to show our internal team 
and to be able to make executive decisions on what needs to go where, what needs to fit how, before we even make a single physical sample. This is something that we do really well and it brings a lot of value in terms of the product creation process. Once we finished up these 3D models, we'll render them out. I discussed with you guys in the beginning that the challenge here was going to have to be what types of nits do we select? What do they look like? How are we mixing the different parts of these nits to create the overall daredevil aesthetic, broad shoulders, angular lines, this sort of like pseudo Tron-like look, but at the same time still maintaining that daredevil-esque appeal. And this all came down to the way that we rendered out the garment. We're able to try different types of patterns, knits, dots on the sides, on the sleeves, all in the name of getting the final results the way we wanted it to. Now that we had a clear idea of how this garment was going to look, it was time to figure out how it was going to fit. There was two key challenges presented with this Daredevil seamless compression. Number one is it was compression. The idea of creating something that was not too loose so that it wouldn't act as compression, but at the same time, not too tight. That way it just would be an overall uncomfortable experience. That was a challenge, finding the middle ground. Also, seamless garments fit quite differently than their cut and sew counterparts. That's simply because seamless is highly knitted. What you're going to get is a significant amount of stretch. And in my experience, a 20.5 inch chest half width on a cut and sew garment almost fits like a 19 inch seamless cut or seamless chest half width, if that makes sense. So seamless tend to have smaller measurements, but they almost feel not as tight when it comes to the chest fit. So it was almost like finding that middle ground and understanding how we were going to fit the garment. Also, it was extremely important to understand that with seamless, not all knits perform the same, not all compositions perform the same. So we had to outline what were our compositions going to be, how much nylon we're going to have in there, how much polyester we're going to have in there, and ultimately how much spandex. The reason we went with a nylon polyester spandex blend is ultimately we had two color yarns in the garment. By having our nylon, we were able to dye those nylon yarns a specific color, as you can see here, red. And by having the polyester yarns in there, we're able to dye them black to achieve that two-tone effect. And ultimately it came down to creating the prototype, but the idea here was to get the proto fit as close as possible to the finished PP sample. The next step here was to finally collate all of the digital assets that we had created over the last couple of steps and produce a factory ready tech pack. This was going to be a complete instruction manual ready to send to the factory in order to create the initial proto sample. Here, some of the challenges were outlining the different knits, not only how they looked, but what the scaling was. There's no use in telling a factory that this is a one by one rib knit or a vertical rib knit or a hexagonal knit if you don't provide scale. So what we did was we created these patterns and graphics pages and we provided seamless tie level graphics that showed the scale of the pattern, the look of the pattern and ultimately how the pattern was meant to be implemented. We also needed to figure out the branding elements. Both of the external branding elements, aka the things that you visually see on the outside of the garment and the branding elements on the inside of the garment. Given that this was a seamless knit construction, we had to be quite selective. It's, in my opinion, not necessarily advisable to use a knitted logo on a seamless garment for two key reasons. Number one, if the fabric isn't double faced, like on a legging waistband, what you'll end up with ex is excess thread on the inside, which can be unsightly, can create some bulging on the surface of the fabric. And at the same time, the knit itself is constrained by the fidelity and density of the knitting garment itself. So if you have a particularly detailed logo with a lot of sharp lines, you're not going to be able to recreate that in a knit. So we ended up going for a heat transfer garment or a heat transfer logo with a 3M reflective finish. And on the front, to add some more brand depth, we created this ground in woven label with a silk screen print that was extremely robust and durable. When it came to the inside of the garment, the sizing label and the care label, we had two options. We could go for a printed neck tag, which a lot of sportswear companies will do, but since we already had a heat transfer print on the back, 
we didn't want to subject the fabric to more heat transfer printing. There's two reasons for that. One, because of the excess heat added, it could damage the garment if you're not safe. Also, it could damage the other side of the print, depending on which one is put first. So the safe approach for this was to create a care label with the brand name, the sizing, and the instructions on it. And lastly, the final step in the process was to take this digital tech pack and turn it into a physical prototype. We sent it off to the factory. The physical prototype took around three weeks before they had actually constructed the knits into the finished garment. We asked them to create a test knit for each of the six textures that we had in the garment in order to make sure that we were getting the fidelity of them right, the scale of them right, and that they were understanding what we were looking for. This was going to save us a lot of back and forth before the garment even left the factory. And then we received the finished prototype. And honestly, because of how detailed and accurate the tech pack was, we had almost no changes. And this is what a good factory ready tech pack can do for you. It can save you a lot of time going back and forth. And ultimately it can create a garment that is highly detailed, highly complex with a lot of your own personal input without having to recreate the sample 20, 30 times. The only thing that we had to do was to adjust the chest half width, the waist half width and the bottom half width a little bit, just to get it a little bit more compressive because I, as I mentioned, seamless tends to fit a little bit looser because of how much stretch it is. But other than that, the changes were extremely simple. The customer was over the moon with the finished product and we were very happy to have this complex garment that we had created from A to Z and deliver it to the customer and their very, very own happy customers. Well, that is pretty much it guys. That is a wrap on episode two of our design to production series. If you guys enjoy this, please consider leaving a thumbs up. Let us know in the comments below what other product types you'd want us to see us cover in the future. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode, again, I highly recommend you subscribe. We put out great content with clinical consistency on a week to week basis, and we'd love to have you guys around for the ride. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next week's episode, stay awesome.